This video will show you how to solve an equation that has variables on both sides of the equal sign. The bottom line is that we must get the variable on one side and then the numbers to the other side. So take an equation like 6x minus 8 equals 2x plus 4. The 6x and the 2x are like terms and you may be tempted to put them together, but they are like terms on opposite sides of the equal sign which means we're going to have to do the opposite to get them together. You can't just take the 6x and the 2x and put them together and make 8x. We have to do the opposite to get them together. So we will start by subtracting 2x from both sides. When we subtract 2x from this side, that's going to cancel out, and we're going to be able to do this arithmetic over here and have 4x minus 8 equals 4. At this point, you should recognize it's a two-step equation, and we know how to solve those. So we pick up where we were in the previous video and solve this by adding 8 to both sides. These 8s cancel out. Do the arithmetic on the right side, and you'll have 4x equals 12. 4x means 4 times x. Undo the multiplying by dividing both sides by 4, and we get x equals 3. The check is going to have us take 3 and put it in place of x on both sides, there and there. So we're really checking to see if both sides are equal to each other. So 6 times 3 minus 8 on the left side, 2 times 3 plus 4 on the right side. 6 times 3 is 18, 18 minus 8 gives us 10 on the left side. If we get 10 on the right side, then we know we're correct. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10, so we know we're correct. 7x plus 11 equals 9x minus 3. We always want to start with the x terms, and we can subtract 9x from both sides, or we could subtract 7x from both sides. It would be smarter to subtract 7x from both sides, because then we will keep things positive. So those 7x's cancel out, and we'll have 11 equals 2x minus 3, which is a two-step equation. Undo the minus 3 by adding 3 to both sides. Those cancel out, and we'll have 2x equals 14. To undo 2 times x, do the opposite, which is divide by 2, which gives us x equals 7. To do this check, we're going to have to put 7 in for that x and 7 in for that x and see if the two sides are equal to each other. So 7 times 7 is 49, plus 11, which is 60. On this side, 9 times 7 is 63. Subtract 3 from that gives us 60. It checks, so we know x equals 7 is the correct answer. This one, I've just kind of switched some order around, but it's still the same process. Would you like to add 2x to both sides or add 5x to both sides? It doesn't matter what you do. I'm going to add 5x to both sides. That way I'm going to keep things positive because this will cancel out. The negative 2x plus 5x gives me a positive 3x on the left side. Two-step equation, let's subtract 12 from both sides. Those 12s cancel out. Gives us 3x equals negative 19. Undo the multiplying by dividing both sides by 3, and we have x equals negative 19 thirds. The answer is a fraction, which means you may not want to plug that back in to check, and that's okay. Mainly just do the checks on things that would be easy checks for you. Now, sometimes you have these equations where you have variables on both sides, but you also have fractions to deal with. The bottom line is when you have a lot of fractions to deal with, you want to get rid of them in the beginning by multiplying everything by a common denominator. If you can't think of the least common denominator, then just multiply the two or three or four denominators together and use that number. In this case, the only denominators we have are 2 and 3. 2 times 3 gives me 6 which is the least common denominator. If you use the least common denominator, that will keep your number smaller. If you use a denominator larger than necessary, it'll still work. You'll just have bigger numbers to deal with. The other thing I would suggest you do is that you take a problem written like this and you rewrite it spaced out so that you have room to multiply by that common denominator. We're really multiplying both sides by 6. This whole side this whole side by 6. But instead of just showing the 6's on the outside here, what I do is multiply every single term by 6. And it's a good idea to write it as 6 over 1 so that you can do individual canceling with these fractions. So I can cancel now. I can do 3 into 3 once, 3 into 6 twice, 
2 times 2x gives me 4x right here. Go to the next one. This is just plain old 6 times 5, which is 30. Equals, canceling, 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 times 1 is 3x. And then 7 times 6 is 42. After doing that, you have gotten rid of all of the fractions. We are down to the plain old equations that we began this video with. You want to get your x's on one side and numbers to the other. So there's that same equation. I would subtract 3x from both sides at this point. Those cancel out, leaving you with x minus 30 equals 42. All you have to do now is add 30 to both sides to undo that subtracting 30, which gives you x equals 72. So the key in solving this kind of problem where you have fraction coefficients is to get rid of the denominators by multiplying by the common denominator. So there's the problem. I'm going to start by spreading it out so I've got room to write my common denominator. Well, I've got 5, 4, 2, and 3. If nothing comes to mind as a common denominator, you could multiply all of this together to get a common denominator. But before you do that, notice that 2 goes into 4. So whatever denominator I pick that 4 is a factor of, 2 is automatically a factor. So I could do 5 times 4 times 3, which is 60, which is the least common denominator. And 2 is a factor of 60. That verifies that 60 is good to use. So I'm going to write 60 times each one of those fractions. And just do my individual canceling. 5 into 5 once, 5 into 60, 12 times. Then 12 times 2, which is 24x, minus, over here, 4 into 4 once, 4 into 60 goes 15 times, 15 times 3 is 45, equals 2 into 2 once, 2 into 60 30 times, 30 times 1 is 30x. Now on this last one, just to show you in case you don't like doing the canceling, you could always take this fraction and just multiply top times top, 60 times 1 is 60, bottom times bottom, 1 times 3 is 3, and once you have one fraction, go ahead and divide it out, 3 goes into 60 20 times. That's the same thing you would get by doing the reducing, but some people don't like to do the reducing, so you can always do top times top, bottom times bottom, and then divide it out. Here we go, we don't have any fractions. We're down to a plain old equation that we can solve. We have 24x from both sides or 30x from both sides. It's a better idea to subtract 24x from both sides because that's going to make easy arithmetic. Those 24x's cancel out here, and we're going to have negative 45 equals 6x plus 20. To get this x alone, we should subtract 20 from both sides. Those are going to cancel. It's going to give me 6x equals negative 65 to undo that multiplying by 6, divide by 6, and that's your answer. The 6 is cancel out right here, and you're going to have x equals negative 65 over 6. So that's your, your video for variables on both sides of the equal sign. If you have fractions involved, multiply both sides by the common denominator and make the fractions cancel out.